Today we're going to talk about how to put more color into your portraits, and I am taking a class about that. So let's get started. So I'm taking a class that is online, and it is David K. Loganberg class. I will put a link in the description below. It is probably the best class I've taken online. I've taken another class which was really great online, but that was an in-person class, so it was live. This is the best class that I've taken where it is pre-recorded. Now the good thing about being pre-recorded is you can continue to look at the content now or maybe a year from now if you want to, so you can revisit it, and that's really helpful. The other thing that he has as part of his course is a discussion page where he actually will comment on what you've done. Well, that really amazed me because that's often the difference between taking a class that's live and taking a class that's pre-recorded. So I really, really recommend this class. He is a wonderful teacher. One of the things that makes him a wonderful teacher is you get the sense as he's teaching you uh, that he is not holding anything back. There are lots of times where people will not tell you exactly what the secret sauce is, if you know what I mean. And I know there's no real secret sauce, but he really covered absolutely everything that I could imagine needing to know. Now his system, I shouldn't call a system, but his, his painting is, has a lot to do with value, of course. I mean, value and color, we talk about that all the time. And I was talking for, uh, I'm always talking about massing for value, mixing for color. But the thing that's different about what he's doing is he is not as wedded to the value of a specific color. He will often use water to get the value that he wants. And you know on this channel, if you watch for any period of time, how I really preach about not using water to get to the value you want because it tends to lead to very, very uh, insipid, watery paintings that look like they've gone into the wash and are faded like a, a faded pair of blue jeans. But if you have good, good control over your value patterns, you can really control how, much, how dense you want the paint to be. Now, this does mean that years of practice and working in watercolor really came in handy here. I know how to mix up a tea strength. I know the milk, tea, cream, butter. I know the consistency of paint. I know how much to put on my brush. I know how to load it. I know I know how to control it as it comes off the brush. Now I should also mention that he uses round brushes and I use flats. Um, he also uses quite a bit of patterning and texture and splatter, which I don't. And, and that's not a problem. I just mean he he's, tends to be a juicier painter than I am. But getting back to the specific class, he really works you through it bit by bit so that um, I, I could not even think of a question that he didn't cover. It's also a well-paced class. And so I'll say it again, it's David K. Lobenberg. I've been an admirer of his for a very, very long time because it, his work is just so, it's just super exciting and stands out. You know, you if you see his portraits next to other people's portraits, you just you you know that it's his. That specific style is 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 just uh, so distinctive. And I am, of course, very interested in color and pattern, and that comes in really handy. So I'm hoping to do a lot more faces, and uh, I need other than my own. That's for sure. So um, so where was I? Okay, so. The, um, so one side of the face has cool colors, and those tend to be green, blue, violet, and the other side of the face is warmer colors, reds, oranges, and yellows. And I'm very aware of that, because that distinction, just the distinction of those two juxtaposed to each other is going to create form. And we all know that's, that's the goal, right? To create forms out of these colors because you're dealing, you know, it's a flat piece of paper, flat surface, and you have to create the illusion of something that's a form, something that's round. And so, um, so using color to, to bend the form is what's happening here. Now I did neutralize my hair because, um, first of all, I didn't realize how gray I've gotten in the past year. Yeah, well, you know, we all know what the last year has been. It'll turn anybody's hair gray. <laughs> so, 
But I do like neutrals when they're next to color because as you know, they tend to make color seem even more colorful. And if a painting is all color, if everything is color, then in a sense, nothing is color. It's almost like it, the power is, is taken away if everything is colorful. So I'm really, I was really glad to, actually to have gray hair because I thought, oh good, that's a place for the eye to rest a little bit because it's, it's, sometimes the color can just be too exciting for the brain to take in. Now I'm warming up that side. That's the warm side of the face. So that violet goes into a uh, red and then into a yellow. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to say was I used three colors for this painting. I used ultramarine blue, Hansa yellow, and alizarin crimson. I wanted to unify everything. And one of the ways to unify everything is to use a limited palette. And because I knew I was experimenting with way more color than I would normally use, I thought, well, one of the variables that might help me have better success would be to use a limited palette. So I can use those three colors for months and months and months and not need anything else. It's kind of amazing. Um, so, so he takes you all the way through the tea strength, milk, cream, and butter, and really uses the um, density of the paint to create some of the values that he wants. And that's not something that I've really talked about on my channel. We've talked about the different densities of paint, that's for sure. But as you know, I, I, as I, and I said before, I don't tend to use uh, water in order to get to the value I want to. I like to mix for the value that I want. But in this case, I think it's opened up a new door for me that I think is going to be really helpful, where almost any color is OK to use really opens, breaks the barriers of, um, of, of what you can and can't do. No color is off limits, but the density of the color matters and the juxtaposition between warm colors and cool colors to create form is where the emphasis is. Now, I know this is a longer video than what I usually do, and you can speed it up if you want to. I think when it appears on YouTube, you can touch the screen and three dots will come up and you can speed it up if you want to or slow it down. But I almost kind of wanted this for my own self as well. You know, one of the things that really helps me learn is seeing myself paint <laughs> because it all goes by really fast when you're doing it yourself. You know, you start on a white piece of paper and all of a sudden everything comes at you really, really fast. And with watercolor, you kind of have to move with a certain degree. You have to move fast. Not not all the time, but it's 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 not something that you can really dilly dally on. The other thing about watercolor is if you really get off track, if you if your values are really off track, you you just have to start over again. There's just no recovery from that. The other thing is you can't get back the whites of the paper once they're gone. And as you know, I don't use any masking fluid or or anything like that. And I try to use as few strokes as possible. I really like simplicity in painting. That's just what I'm drawn to. So if you've watched this far, thank you very much. I'm going to be doing some more portraits, and I'm looking for pictures to work from. Um, remember to keep the whites of your paper white and your paints wet. Mass for value, mix for color. And we'll be talking more about the density of color in the future, because it's a huge factor. And if you haven't joined my YouTube channel, as about 90% of people who watch these have not, please do, because that's a lot of people. <laughs> it would be really helpful to me. And also check out David K. Lobenberg's uh, class on his website. Like I said, I'll put the link below. And also he has a YouTube channel, so you can go there right away and take a look. And uh, you will see that his are tons better than mine. But what excites me about all of this is just sharing and learning. I mean, that's, that's the most exciting thing of all to me. So uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Here comes the final prod product. All right. Bye-bye.